There isn't anything as heartbreaking as hearing the lock of the big metal doors behind you as you leave a psychiatric facility, knowing your child is on the other side, those doors. My daughter is 13 years old. She's been hospitalized six times, and she's currently in a treatment center. She has autism, and she's diagnosed with bipolar. My daughter does not fit the typical mold. Her daily struggles are overwhelming at times for her and for us. But you know, even with that, she looks at the world differently, and that is a blessing. She literally has a sixth sense when it comes to animals. She understands them. <laughs> she calls herself an animal rescuer, and the list of animals I've had in my house goes on and on. Okay, it goes from possum, mm -hmm, to stingray, mm -hmm, to five and a half foot snake. And the five and a half foot snake only lasted long enough for me to go and buy the mouse, we'd have to feed the snake, and then guess what? She rescues the mouse. <laughs> I love my daughter, but love is just not enough to fix all the things that she struggles with when it comes to social skills and learning disabilities and just constantly changing moods. You know, mental illness, it doesn't play favorites. It can hit any family at any time. And all of a sudden, you are thrust into a new world where you're trying to understand complex diagnoses multiple therapies, educational alternatives, and intense interpersonal struggles. And most families, like ours, are suffering in silence. But we feel a lot of things, and some of those things are embarrassment and shame, fear of failing as parents, helplessness, hopelessness, and the fear of the future. But if you're one of those who has a child I want to really encourage you to be an advocate for that child. I feel like a lobbyist most of the time because I lobby to get my what my child needs because if I don't do it, she's not going to get it. And if you don't do it, if your child struggles with this, they're not going to get it. Some of the services that we've gotten are animal therapy, uh, after school programs, we've gotten OT, PT, all, these, all kinds of therapies. But I encourage you to reach out for those and also to getting connected. We have belonged to a high-functioning autism group that's really helped us find resources and ways to connect with others. We've also been a part of Special Olympics. She got a medal, so that's been inspiring for us. Um, but, and when I, we first started this, the other thing that you can do as parents is to consider medication. When we first started this, I wanted to go the natural route. Yeah, and then I was like, doctor, you gotta medicate her, or you gotta medicate me, but somebody's gotta be medicated. <laughs> Medication can, be, it can really help, so consider that as well. You know, don't close off any doors. Because I don't want this to break you. I want this to make you into the parent that you were destined to become. Because God doesn't make mistakes. And your child is fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are the parent that God wanted for them. Now, if you don't struggle with mental illness on a daily basis, if you're among this crowd <laughs> and you don't, I would like to encourage you to get involved and to help, to support us. It takes a village to raise a child. That is never more true than in our case. So what can you do? Don't judge us. The next time you see a child having a meltdown, consider you might not know the whole story and those parents may have tried every technique you tried and they just don't work. Or volunteer at church. We go to a church that has a special needs ministry. Without it, we couldn't go. And we're so thankful to have that. It would just take two hours of your time on a Sunday. And then what about the more personal ones? What about the ones that you know? You know a family that struggles um, with someone. And maybe you can offer to make dinner. Or maybe you can offer to watch the kids so that the parents can go on a date night. Because date nights are few and far between when most of your resources are spent on medications and therapies but you could offer your time like that. And we can't just call the local babysitter, you know, the teenager, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so an adult is necessary. So really what I wanna say is let's stop the silence about it and let's start talking about mental illness because my daughter needs this conversation to happen and I don't want it to end here.
Thank you.